For far more insight, let's speak now with Dr. Benjamin Rod. He's a political scientist and lecturer at the UCLA School of Law. Uh, Dr. Rod, I want to start with your analysis on Mr. Blinken's diplomatic tour. You know, compared to his first Middle East trip, his Israel message seemed to have shifted somewhat. Has Washington's strategy changed? And what's your read into U.S. priorities right now? Thank you for having me. The priorities right now, I think, are consistent with where they were before, which is to allow Israel to conduct operations in defense and also in prosecution of the war, by that meaning targeting the Hamas leadership structure and eliminating Hamas's military capability. What's different increasingly now is more pressure from the United States to make sure that Israel acts in ways that minimize civilian casualties and offering advice and guidance on how to go about doing that and also securing additional support and reassurance from Arab colleagues and, um, uh, excuse me, Arab um, uh, allies and leaders in the region. Uh, regarding events on the ground, the Israeli army has said its land assault on the Gaza Strip had on Sunday split the Palestinian territory in two, with significant strikes continuing in its war against Hamas. Uh, what is Israel's strategy here? Israel's strategy is first and foremost to rescue and get the hostages released. The second part of that has to be identifying the location of the Hamas leadership structure, finding its fighters, and elim eliminating Hamas's ability to conduct any further military operations or acts of terrorism against Israel. These are its primary objectives and are the reasons that we're seeing these airstrikes, specific, some of them very pinpoint, some of them less direct. Mm. And doctor, attention also now on what will happen to Gaza and who will run it if Israel achieves its war aim of uh, dismantling Hamas. Now, one idea being discussed in Washington is a possible interim government run by Arab states or the UN even before the Palestinian Authority takes over. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, that's a great question, and I think it remains outstanding. I think there's been no guidance yet on what that post-conflict state is going to look like or what the political situation will be. Part of uh, Secretary Blinken's meeting with um, President uh, Abbas today in the West Bank, in Ramallah, had to do in part with identifying possible pathways to a temporary governing system run by the Palestinian Authority in Gaza until some long-term solution can be decided. I mean, and we should keep in mind that the PA was in Gaza, had a presence there up until a, a sort of a, a mini civil war or bloody coup throughout all PA leadership in 2007. So I think restoring Palestinian Authority connection to Gaza and bringing some leadership element to that area would be very beneficial. And I think that's what the United States is going to try to secure. And Blinken says regional leaders would welcome a humanitarian pause, but Israel says it needs progress on the release of hostages before agreeing to any such pause in its offensive. What's the main obstacle then uh, to a pause in hostilities? Well, the big challenge is going to be how to prevent Hamas from rearming and reconstituting its ability to launch attacks. Despite the Israeli airstrikes that have taken place since October 7th, we've seen Hamas effectively launch more missiles into central and southern Israel. So Hamas is still maintaining this capacity to attack Israel. And from Israel's perspective, that is exactly what it is trying to minimize. And the concern is an extended ceasefire would be used as an opportunity for Hamas to reconstitute and rebuild its ability to wage war. Doctor, as the war and also the criticism of it intensifies, uh, Washington's reputation as an well, honest broker in the Middle East has suffered. Uh, what potential risks uh, does the U.S. face as the conflict in the region continues to persist both home and abroad? Well, I believe the risks are short term. And any time there's a war or a crisis that flares up uh, between the Arabs and the Israelis, you see the United States taking a very pro-Israel side. You see uh, outcry, protests in the street. But at the end of the day, you know, weeks or months later, normalcy in terms of diplomatic relations is maintained, if not returned, between the United States and the Arab world in the region. The, the Arab countries have their own concerns apart from what is taking place between Israel and Hamas. And their concerns, especially for the Gulf states, is an empowered Iran, an Iran ability to use of both its forces and its proxy forces to increase instability in the region and to project its own power. So to the extent that the United States' interests align with other Arab states, 
the impact from this conflict will be minimal given the greater concern of Iran's threats. Well, speaking of Iran, Iran's threats, uh, Hezbollah said it fired multiple uh, grade rockets at the northern Israeli town of Kiryat Shimona, uh, Shimona on Sunday in retaliation for an Israeli strike in South Lebanon. Do you see a second front opening up there? Well, we were anticipating Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, to make some kind of statement about Hamas's, pro, uh, excuse me, Hezbollah's proactive decisions to um, open up a second front in the north. So far, we have not seen that. We've seen sporadic rocket strikes and cross-border attacks, nothing indicating that a larger operation is imminent, but nobody should rule that out. However, the presence of two U.S. carrier groups in the Mediterranean and in the Gulf and the secretary's visit to Iraq today, which was a surprise announcement, was in part to reaffirm U.S. commitment to maintaining a security buffer on the northern front. So I think that as of now, nobody's interested in seeing an escalation. And uh, doctor, we are now a month into this conflict. Uh, is there still hope for a diplomatic solution or is the war the only way out? For now, there is no talk of a diplomatic solution until, from Israel's position, the hostages are released and Hamas is neutralized as a military and political entity. I do firmly believe that once that takes place, given Netanyahu's massive unpopularity domestically, coupled with a desire to return to a two-state process, a peace process that has been echoed by many Israelis and across the uh, region as a whole, I do believe that this will renew an opportunity to pursue a two-state solution. But all of that is going to be tabled until Israel's primary military objectives are met. All right, Dr. Rod, thank you very much for your insight. This morning, we've been speaking with Dr. Benjamin Rod, political scientist and lecturer at the UCLA School of Law.